Well, good afternoon. Thank you for joining us. Today, we are announcing the expansion of a violent crime task force to bring together all levels of law enforcement to reduce violent crime impacting Boone County and Columbia, to enhance public safety, and to make our neighborhoods safe for everyone. This task force, including the Columbia Police Department, the University of Missouri Police Department, the Boone County Sheriff's Office, and the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms, pursues community violence through sustained, proactive, coordinated, intelligence-based investigations to obtain prosecutions on violations such as racketeering, drug conspiracy, and firearms violations. We know crime does not stop at the city limits. And while our officers and detectives on the ground constantly share information, this initiative expands cooperation and communication among federal, state, and local law enforcement agencies. Trigger pullers don't always come from here, and we know they don't stay here. But while guns are mobile, too often our local law enforcement are geographically based. Now with the continued participation of the ATF, our local law enforcement agencies will have federally deputized officers dedicated to working crimes under federal firearms laws and have available federal prosecution of illegal crime guns. Violent crime involving firearms must stop. Our partner agencies have been working together to provide a targeted approach to reducing firearm-related violence with intelligence-based analysis to, to, to strategically get persistent violent offenders off the streets and out of our neighborhoods. But we felt it was important to announce this effort today to be transparent, to continue to build public confidence in public safety, and to get the word out that the full weight and resources of our collective agencies will now be available. This partnership with multi-jurisdictional resources and illegal crime gun intelligence will help disrupt the shooting cycle and reduce, prevent, and solve violent gun crimes. It is my pleasure to introduce our lead partner in this effort, a assistant special agent in charge of the U.S. Department of Justice Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms, Mr. Frank Kelsey. Sir? Thank you, Mayor. Again, my name is Frank Kelsey. I'm the Assistant Special Agent in Charge of the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms, and Explosives, the Kansas City Field Division. On behalf of uh, SAC Marino Vitale and the ATF, I would like to thank everyone here. This joint task force will investigate those in our communities that use firearms and violent crime through the use of ballistic intelligence, crime gun tracing, and old-fashioned police work, our mission will be to identify trigger pullers and those that provide them with firearms and bring them to justice. Combining the resources of our agencies, we will make our neighborhoods more safe and ensure that those that choose to use firearms to further their criminal activities are held accountable locally and across jurisdictional lines. Thank you. Let me, ask, let me ask Columbia Police Chief Jeff Jones to come forward and talk about some of the logistics of this, how many officers are dedicated to, the, to um, this effort, uh, what that looks like front-facing for our community. Chief Jones? So since 2012, we've been involved with the ATF and the Boone County Sheriff's Department in addressing violent crime as a task force. In 2012, uh, we started with an agent and two officers. Uh, I'm happy today to announce that the Columbia Police Department will be providing four officers. MUPD will be giving one officer. Boone County Sheriff's Department will be giving four officers. And the ATF will have two agents assigned, one full time. Boone County is going to provide the space. And all of our officers will be working together each day to address violent crime. I want to point out that we have an opportunity to use these combined resources as a force multiplier. 
It gives the opportunity for us to address violent crime in a very efficient and effective way uh, using intelligence-based methods and allowing our officers who work in our neighborhoods to focus on their neighborhoods outside of uh, each critical incident. I want to thank each of you for coming and I appreciate every one of you for the efforts that you bring. Um, Mr. Knight, I appreciate you coming. Uh, we've had a lot of conversations recently about prosecution at both the state and federal level and having these agencies that are represented today along with our prosecutors working together will be very effective. Um, and I see a safer community because of it. So thank you all and uh, we'll take questions. Roger. I think there are several common sense gun reform solutions that would help curb gun violence and particularly illegal gun violence. Um, as you know, I've had a, a series of conversations along with Chief Jones and the, the mayors of Kansas City, St. Louis, Springfield, and their respective police chiefs with the governor's office, with House and Senate leadership uh, about these issues. And, um, you know, the three areas that, that we have identified is uh, enhanced witness protection to make sure that our detectives and officers on the front lines, when, when they encounter someone that's willing to um, say something, um, that we provide the protection and the security they need uh, uh, from the moment of that incident on through that court date. Um, the second is some type of, of mental health uh, interdiction to really break that cycle of gun violence so that we don't see this recurring cycle of, of violence and retaliation that, um, that put our law enforcement officers and our entire community at risk. And I think the third is to have some type of prosecutorial discretion that if the state of Missouri is not going to address um, the loopholes in state law when it comes to persistent violent offenders uh, and domestic violence abusers, uh, that because we now have local law enforcement officers dedicated and deputized, uh, we can send these cases um, for federal prosecution. Um, you know, Missouri is one of those states that, that really um, hamstring local governments and cities because of the preemption ordinance. Uh, we can't enact uh, additional laws when it comes to licensing or sale and transfer or insurance or background checks. Um, we need Jeff City to act on that. And uh, if they're not going to act, we're going to use the full weight of our collective agencies to, to break and disrupt that cycle of violence. Anyone else? Yes. Carter. We do. Um, there are there are um, there's a pilot project in Greene County that I have hoped to replicate here in Columbia. Uh, I know our our. Um, police department is already working with our local mental health provider, Burl Center, uh, to have some type of mental health liaison available um, for those types of cases. We know there's about 500 mental health referrals to our local emergency room from Columbia Police Department alone. Um, I think that type of, of um, um, uh, intervention is helpful, but we also need to work with those families. Statistically, in the month of September, we know that um, shooting victims are more likely to be um, trigger pullers in the future, and we need to do something to work with them and their families and their loved ones to make sure that they are not, um, you know, completing that, that cycle of, of retaliation. On the witness protection side, we have asked the governor's office for additional resources and the, the um, um, right now that power um, to provide witness protection uh, exists in the Office of Prosecutorial Services at the state level. We need to empower our local detectives and frontline officers so that when they encounter a witness to a crime, they have the ability to say, I can protect you, come with me right now, and have those resources available to safeguard that witness up until um, prosecution and, and court date. Yes? 
Well, I think we need to get the, the word out that, that violent gun crimes have to stop, that this is not acceptable. But it's not just the criminals that need to hear this. This provides important positive reinforcement to our entire community, to victims and witnesses that when you see something and say something, it will result in a prosecution. And that makes us all safer and that positive reinforcement helps reinforce our community policing model um, that makes sure that everybody has confidence in public safety. Yes, sir. So we, we did some realignment uh, to get here. Um, some of the work that was being done by our street crimes unit was in conjunction with the work that was being done at the task force. Um, we have, we've always had one person assigned to the ATF out of our VNOC unit, Vice Narcotics and Organized Crime Unit. Um, we're taking two of our street crimes officers, detectives, and moving them into the role of working these violent crimes, which they're pretty much doing anyway, but this will uh, improve communication, make sure that we're working more collaboratively. Uh, and the, th the next, the fourth officer is coming from our patrol division. Uh, it's important to have that type of communication so that each one of those divisions is represented, that the communication is going both ways. Uh, I really think after we get started and see some of our initial successes, uh, and we're already starting to see some of that, um, I, th I think that that will lessen the burden on the street cop. We have four from CPD, four from the Sheriff's Department, one from MUPD, and two from the ATF. I would like to point out that we have several federal partners that are not here and not formally part of the task force, but we do regularly, and I think um, our ATF partner would also point out that FBI, the U.S. Marshal Service, DEA, uh, IRS, all of those federal agencies uh, regularly work with the task force uh, to help with federal prosecution. So that's correct. Thank you very much.